the topography and skyline is a far cry from the desert of Arizona. You look at a drum heller found there. It is Pac-10 softball on the shores of Montlake. The top-ranked Huskies taking on the second-ranked Wildcats from Arizona. Hi, friends. I'm Angie Mentig, along with my broadcast partner, former All-American Dina Tyson-Sly. And runs are going to come at a premium, unless, of course, the wind continues to blow out like this. But that's because you have two of the best pitchers in the country, arguably, if not the best, in Danielle Laurie and Kenzie Fowler. Is that you see them at the top of the charts in all the Pac-10 categories, is that probably who scores first is going to win this game. All right, so offensively, these teams have their work cut out for them. At the top, it starts for the dogs with Jen Sally. As Jen Sallin is not your ordinary leadoff batter, that she actually bats fourth on the Canadian team. And then there's Kimmy Pullman, who leads the team with 13 steals. So when Jen gets on is that, and Kim's on base, is that you know it's going to be heck to pay. Yeah, and if the top two get on, then chances are Nikki Williams or Danielle Laurie are hitting him in. The 3-4 batters for the dogs with 69 RBIs. Now, for Arizona, it is not unheard of for them to come north with all nine batters batting over 400. This year, maybe not all nine, but uh, they do have three over the 400 mark and a couple in the top two spots. As that you see Brittany Lestraps, who leads the team with home runs. And not only that, she is the leader of, le of their leadoff batters to have the most home runs ever. Mm -hmm. And then there is Lauren Schutzler, who has a higher batting average than Brittany Lestraps. So when Brittany starts again off with a home run, Lauren has no issues with starting the inning all over again. This is the second weekend of Pac-10 play, and with the victory last night, Washington improves to 3-1. and one. They're at the top of the conference standings, tied with Stanford and Oregon with the loss. Arizona now tied with Arizona State at 2-2. Two and two. When we look at the top 25 rankings, you see Washington and Arizona, the two teams today at the top, but five of the top 10 in the nation hail from the Pac-10, Dina. Is that the Pac-10 should definitely be in their own league, maybe have their own <laughs> World Series, is that they're just in a a whole nother league than most other conferences. You know what, while that sound, that idea may sound absurd, it's not completely unfounded. All right, get ready for Pac-10 softball, folks. It's number one versus number two, the Huskies versus the Wildcats next year on UWTV. Welcome to Pac-10 Softball here on UWTV. It's number one Washington versus the second ranked Wildcats from Arizona. Temperatures 55 degrees, partly cloudy skies, but uh, this is fantastic weather compared to last week uh, where the, uh, the wet stuff just wouldn't stop coming down. 
But uh, it is quite windy today, so it'll be interesting to see what kind of role that plays. All right, uh, for the Arizona Wildcats, so this is how they're going to play it. Brittany Lestraps leads off, followed by Lauren Schutzler. Kaylee Arandondo, the shortstop batting third. Stacey Chambers cleaning things up. Uh, Del Pont, Lini Correa, Bailey Kirker, Kristen Ariola, and Carissa Buchanan, the right fielder, batting ninth. Right now they're doing their introductions. Looking at the back of Danielle Laurie, who will be in the circle for the dogs today. And uh, I was talking to Mike Candrea, and, and the way they had been playing things, Dina, was they would start Kenzie Fowler on Friday and Sunday, and we wouldn't see her very often on a Saturday game like today's, yet she is in the circle today, but says to me, hey, listen, Angie, if this was late in the season, it might be a different story, but he saw this game, and uh, specifically this weekend matchup with the Dogs is being very pivotal for his season. I can definitely see where he comes from that, saying that, is that sometimes to win a series, it builds you into the postseason. So to take a series from the University of Washington would be huge for his team. So you have to win today, so thus putting your number one on the mound. Yeah, I want to be clear, Mike Candre, uh, uh, the head coach for the Wildcats, who you see right there, did not tell me who was going to start. He just said you had to put your best foot forward. But he's taken off their hat for the national anthem. Mike Candrea to, to finish the thought before the anthem was saying that uh, that uh, it was very important that they put their best foot forward today against Heather Tarr and her club. You uh, take the numbers on uh, Coach Tarr's resume in her sixth season as head coach. Of course, the former uh, head coach for the University of Washington, Teresa Wilson, is the pitching coach for the University of Arizona. She was a player here as well. She was a player uh, under Coach Tar. Excuse me, under Coach Wilson. And uh, you look at uh, Mike Candrea, and uh, it's, it's gross. So eight national championships in the last 19 years, 21 trips to the Women's College World Series of the last 22 years, and 1,100 career Division I victories faster than any coach in history. This is what... Basically, when we check in with Heather Tart in another few years, I expect to see. <laughs> yes, I feel they, and they have the same personality. Mm -hmm. Those quiet coaches don't really yell, but will get to the point. No, no, not big screamers, but uh, I have had uh, the opportunity to, to be on, as a player under Coach Candre at Olympic festivals, and, and you're exactly right. Um, he, he has a very quiet approach, um, but uh, when he talks, you listen. He just has that stern look about it. All right, so the Huskies take the field, and Danielle Laurie is going to make her way out to the circle. Shauna Wright will be uh, doing the catching for Danielle Laurie today. Defensively, this is uh, this is how the dogs are going to play it. So we've got uh, Kimmy Pullman in left, Allison McWhorter, who you will not see in the batter's box out in center field. That's because the DP in softball, Bailey Stenson, is your right fielder. Hooch Fagali is at first, even though Nikki Williams is listed as the first baseman. Hooch Fagali will actually be out there defensively. Amanda Fleisman, Jen Salling over at short, Morgan Stewart over at third, and again, Shauna Wright behind the dish catching Danielle Laurie. It's that weird DP that they have, and basically, 
by making Hooch Fagali the DP, Allison Gruder, who is the center fielder, can come in and run for Hooch Fagali as much as they want to. <laughs> Coach Tar definitely uses the rules to her advantage. She's a smart woman. Mm -hmm. And why not have Allison Gruder run for Hooch? Yeah, Shauna Wright doing the catching for the dogs today. Just a freshman. And uh, it started off about as, as well as you can start off for a catcher calling a perfect game for Danielle Murray in her college career. In her first Pac-10 game, she hit 429 on the weekend, had four RBIs to lead the team that Shauna's really breaking through right now. You bring up an interesting point. Shauna Wright, one of two Huskies to actually bat higher in Pac-10 play than in the overall standings, or in the overall statistics. And uh, I'm here to tell you, as is Dina, that is very rare. All right, so that's going to bring up Brittany Lestraps, and I apologize for both myself and Dina for every single time that we call her Dominique Lestraps, her older sister who played here for the University of Washington, and was your roommate. Yes, me and DL, best friend, <laughs> number three, number four. Dominique down at UC Davis now, Coach? Yes. And did, uh, did Brittany ever come up here? Why you guys were, were at school? Brittany came on our system? recruiting trip. She did come on a recruiting trip. She chose, she chose U of A. Good decision. What are you saying? Hey, she wanted to start her own thing. You know, she'd be down here. Everyone calling her Dominique. <laughs> it's true. It's true. I can't argue that. Brittany, not Dominique, fouling that one off down the left field line. And another shoe she had to field was Caitlin Lowe. As soon as Caitlin Lowe graduated, she came in to be their leadoff batter. Brittany actually has more home runs than any leadoff batter in U of A's history. That is an amazing statistic when you think about the offensive powerhouses that have come through that there was in program. I think it really benefits uh, the slappers. Uh, to have the hard fields that they have down there. So it specifically benefits a player like Brittany, who I, again, wanted to call Dominique, um, to go to Arizona and play on a field like that. Kind of like concrete sprinkled with dust. It's you can so, almost get an infield double. It's so hard. I've beaten out a few ground balls there. <laughs> that hard, huh? <laughs> Brittany was Arizona's only first team All-American last year. First team All-Pac-10 as well as All-Region. This one grounded to Hooch Fagali. And uh, she gets two stabs at it, finally collects it, and steps on first base for out number one. And that'll bring up Lauren Schatzer, the center fielder for the Wildcats. But 461, that's disgusting on the season. A great eye. Got 13 strikeouts. You compare that to the 24 walks she has. So a pretty good idea of her strike zone. Oh, yeah. so you're going to struggle with Brittany. I'm going to struggle with Lauren. Lauren had a sister, Lindsay, who plays at All American at the University of Tennessee. And not only are they Lindsay and Lauren Chester, they were born on the same day, four years apart. <laughs> yeah, I guess you probably wouldn't call Brittany. Dominique, she because it's your roommate. Up. Yes, exactly. And, and you, you clearly are looking at her and know it's not Dominique, where I see the straps and I want to say Dominique. A Danielle Laurie working ahead on a Schutzler. He works the count to 0-2. Schutzler has more time to do more damage for the Wildcats, just a junior. In fact, there's only one senior out in the field for the Wildcats, and uh, that's who's on deck, Kaylee Arandondo, the shortstop for Arizona. So a very young team. A bright future. Yeah. Especially when you look at the numbers and you think, oh my goodness, they're just freshmen and sophomores. And their pitchers are freshmen. <laughs> their number one pitchers are freshmen, so they got her for at least three more years. Yes, and everybody is already calling her the heir apparent to Danielle Laurie. And when you look at her numbers, and, and we will at the bottom half of this inning, uh, you can see where she's headed. Lauren Schutzler right now at bat, though, and uh, his work count back to two and two. Takes a look at that, and after starting out 0 and 2, Danielle Laurie has now gone full on Lauren Schutzler. This is why they say that Lauren Schutzler is like a second leadoff. She works the count, she's gotten 3 2. On a pitcher like Danielle Lurie after starting out 0-2. And, and if you look at the, uh, the times that has happened, not often. 
but uh, she's not going to get her 25th walk of the season. Instead, she will get her 14th strikeout and uh, give Danielle Laurie one for the day. Taking a look at where Danielle Laurie tried to go with this one. She throws a perfect changeup. As I say, Danielle throws a changeup on a hitter's count. Another 3-2 change that she gave to UCLA last weekend and kept the hitters off balance. Well, one thing that uh, the Arizona Slappers do uh, more than, than uh, most is they really get out of the box very quickly, and so they can get frozen a bit more or fooled a little bit more on that changeup. Is that talking to Danny before the game? I know she's going to try to use her changeup and stay on that outside corner a little bit better. This one over into foul territory, and Morgan Stewart giving chase but running out of room. So once again, Danielle Laurie gets out on top of an Arizona hitter, this time Kaylee Arandondo, 0-2. This is one thing Mike Candrea also brought up with me. He's like, listen, against a pitcher like Danielle Laurie, you're not necessarily going to be uh, knocking it all around the yard, but you've got to move the ball. You've got to make contact against her. Especially having a <laughs> strikeout. <laughs> No contact there. Kaylee Arandondo will head back to the dugout for her glove, and we go to the bottom of the inning. Welcome back to the bottom of the first, Washington versus Arizona. And uh, the Wildcats uh, didn't end up with a whole lot of success against Danielle Laurie. This is how the Huskies are going to go at this one. Jen Salling leading off, Kimmy Coleman batting second, Danielle Laurie third, Nikki Williams is your cleanup batter, Shauna Wright, Morgan Stewart, Hooch Fagali is your DP, uh, Bailey Stenson is in right, and Amanda Fleischman in second will bat tonight. And inside the circle, Kenzie Fowler, look at those numbers. Lopsided 21 and three on the season. Came in obviously uh, to this three game set with the Dogs at 21 and two. The Dogs handed her third, her, her third loss of the season. Kenzie just throws, she throws the screw ball, she throws the rise ball, and she just comes with the heat. So she's really starting to develop her change up. She didn't throw too many Husky change ups yesterday, but I think she might try to mix that in a little bit more because the Huskies are kind of used to heat, taking BP off Danny. The media guide, they say, about her undoubtedly one of the most heralded recruits in Arizona history. And I said, huh? How could that be? I mean, when you think about uh, the Jenny Finches, the, the, the Susie Para. Paras, uh, I mean, the, uh, the unbelievable names that have come through this program. And uh, they're expecting more great things out of Kenzie. Stayed local at Canyon Del Oro High School, right there in Tucson, right in the foothills, actually. Here you go, Doug. <laughs> Jen Salen. Oh, pretty swing on that one. <laughs> I think everything she does is pretty. Like, that was a pretty, like, my sister used to tell me I have a pretty strikeout. But that was a pretty swing and miss. <laughs>
Joan Zowling drives this one, but it's going to be foul down the left field line. And uh, speaking with her before the game, she was telling me that she started playing softball when she was five, played soccer as well, and then ended up having to make the decision on, on which one she wanted to stick with, and she ended up going with softball. Her dad played fast pitch softball, and that's so rare to, uh, to see and to hear. Yes, the Canadians are doing it big is that Danny and Jen Sowling are now among the top 25 of the finalists for the USA Player of the Year. And, uh, Danielle Lurie as Jen Sowling heads back to the dugout would be the two-time in a row winner if she's able to come away with that. All right, defensively for the Wildcats, we've got Bailey Kirker at first, Kristen Ariola at second, Katie Aaron down to the shortstop, Bridget Del Ponte at third base, uh, Lestraps in left, Lauren Schutzler in center, and Carissa Buchanan out in right field. That'll bring up Kimmy Pullman for the dogs. Kimmy Pullman. Uh, Kimmy Pullman, a, a sophomore out of Sammamish, went to Bear Creek High School. Fast as lightning. <laughs> you know, I said, you know, when you come to school, come to college, you get four years of softball, but you do have one more, you know, that you could play another sport. I said, so what would it be? Would it be volleyball? Would it be soccer? Would it be track? She goes, soccer. No track. No soccer. Track. So uh, soccer. No, I think track. So she ended with track. <laughs> um, I can't say with conviction that it would be track over soccer. And uh, neither can Kimmy. <laughs> if I had a chance to run track and be in those shorts, I would definitely do it. I've been to a few of those track meets, and I've been... Like, man, only if I could fit in some shorts and look that good. <laughs> and uh, Kimmy Pullman is going to look at that one, tries to check her swing, and maybe they said she did not, and she would head back to the dugout. And that'll bring up Danielle Lurie, the pitcher for the Huskies. And Danielle Lurie, a huge win last night against these Arizona Wildcats. She had popped up. And Bridget Del Ponte is going to get over there and make the catch in foul territory. And the Huskies go away in order. We're heading to the top of the second next here on UWTV. Welcome back, we're in the top of the second inning and in the top of the first, Danielle Laurie threw three first pitch strikes and three quick outs, including two strikeouts and that uh, brings us basically up to date. Now with Stacey Chambers, the catcher for the Wildcats, getting ready to step in against her. Stacey Chambers had 31 home runs and 96 RBIs last year. Ouch. And here's the best part, is that it wasn't a record. <laughs> and then Laura Espinoza, another former Arizona All-American, had 37 in one year. So sorry, Stacy, you have to take second. Yes, I played against uh, Laura Espinoza Watson, and then I played with her 
on the Colorado Silver Bullets and one of the most talented hitters I have ever seen. And you know what? She's kind of, I would compare her to like a Vladimir Guerrero, not only with her size because she's a, a six-footer, but also with her ability to hit ugly. You'd waste a pitch, you know, two inches off the ground and three inches outside, and it's boom, over the left field fence. I mean, she was one of the ugliest ball hitters you've ever seen. Daniel Lurie again jumping out for her fourth first pitch strike against uh, Stacey Chambers. And against a team like Arizona, you've got to do that. You've got to work ahead against an offense like this. But I hope pitchers, young pitchers are watching this is that when you face a good hitting team, you have to get ahead so that you don't have to always bring it into their wheelhouse and you can throw change-ups and screw balls and rise balls. Stay out of the zone. Yeah, Stacey Chambers tried to check her swing on that one. I don't call the uh, change up the oh shoot pitch, oh shoot pitch for nothing. You have to be real careful about how we say that. <laughs> and uh, she will be strikeout victim number three for Danielle Laurie. And uh, Danielle Laurie struck out 11 of the first 12 yesterday. And uh, she can't uh, can't hold back on that one. And Danny has that ball that just runs away from you. Like it looked like Stacy was on it at the last minute. And just goes to the outside corner, and she has no chance of keeping that front side closed and driving it. And at least Stacy Chambers got the bat off the shoulders. Eight strikeouts looking yesterday for the Wildcats. That had to have been frustrating for Mike Candrea. I was in the stands and was frustrated, so I can imagine he was. <laughs> Who are you rooting for, Dina? I'm just good hitting. I like to see good hitting. <laughs> Bridget Del Punto steps in against Danielle Laurie, freshman batting 406. So that was the third member of the uh, Wildcats over the 400 mark. She's also got 15 home runs to go with 55 RBI. And she's a freshman. She, like, she just doesn't know any yeah. better. That's what it must be. Dude. She's no fear. Like, who's Danielle Laurie? <laughs> I imagine by the end of this series, she will know Daniel well. So Bailey Stenson, the right fielder, giving chase, and uh, we're going to do it all over again. One more time, Danielle Lurie jumping out to an 0-2 count. We talked about uh, young pitchers watching this. Please pay attention because you really are seeing the clinic. You're going to check down the first base line. Did she go? And they say no. And talking to Danny before the game, she's just like a whole new person from when I played with her. Is that you can sit there and you can really have a conversation with her. And she accepts criticism and she knows that she has to be better. And she using the change. Like she, she used to just rely on the fastball. There's a change again. Well, it can't be much better than that. And uh, Danielle Lori records strikeout number four. As I talked to Danny and she says, you know, it's tough playing three teams in a row. I said, but you got to love it is that you, you're strategizing with them. They're trying to get better and you're trying to get better. So it looks like Danny, she's done her homework from last night. Lini Korea, the DP, steps up and she's gotten 253 on the year with uh, some power. Left the yard nine times this season. She's got 32 RBI. And she has the long ball. She's a second. Um, actually, Shauna Wright is behind her in the California high school career home runs. It's not only do it in high school, but has been able to do it here at the college level, not only college level, but at the Pac-10 level too. And we'll see later on Bailey Kirker. She's actually number one in California with home runs. So we have one, two, and three here at the field. <laughs> California career home run leaders. Queen Korea, a catcher today, uh, is a DP with Stacy Chambers doing the catching. But uh, another one that's able to step in, and, and they've had so many, uh, so many opportunities, um, or so many, so many injuries that depth has become really important for them. going to three and one and uh, Korea with a huge family tree. I mean you shake this family tree and all kinds of athletes are dropping down. 
She's cousins with Lofa Tatupu, the linebacker for the Seahawks. Everybody knows him well up here. And Danielle Lurie gets the count to full. Mosi Tatupu played running back for USC, the New England Patriots, and then the Rams. Cousin Amea Manumu started on the softball field uh, for, uh, for the Wildcats. Oh, man. I, I never played against her, but I got to see her play. Oh, she could just hit the ball a country mile. I'm sure she still has records. And uh, Rick Thax Korea will two, head to Bailey, Kirk, Kirk. first base with Danielle Lurie's first walk of the day. And that'll bring up Bailey Kirker. And as you pointed out, Dean, another one that can leave the yard if you're not careful with her. It's Mike and Dre of being the face of hitting, too, you know. Everyone, Mike, Mike, we do it the Mike's way, is that I think he can turn anyone into a hitter. So not only does he get these great athletes, then he, now he gets people that he can teach how to hit. Some of these are us natural hitters that go over there. Then he goes and teaches them how to do it. Probably why they have all the records. Yeah, you're really good, and I'm going to make you even better. I always say it's amazing uh, what will happen when somebody believes in you. And, and he's one of those coaches that believes in his players. This one hit back up the middle, and all of a sudden, the Arizona Wildcats with two outs will run in scoring position and get something going here. And uh, there goes the no hitter, I guess. Take the W. Bailey Kirker gets one that uh, is on the middle to the outside half of the plate, and second, she does exactly what you're supposed five. to do with it. If she doesn't try to overpower it because Danny throws hard enough is that she hits it right where it needs to be, good contact point, and it's perfect, right in between the hole. It's going to bring up the second baseman, Kristen Ariola, the sophomore out of Garden Grove, California. You know, you and I have talked about this before, but all the young players nowadays wearing that mask, that protective mask, particularly coming out of Southern California. You know, it drives me crazy. I hate masks. I just, you see your face. You see your pretty <laughs> face. But it, it, it really dates you, because you know the players that probably paid in 2002 and up is that they wear the mask. I didn't wear the mask, so I guess I'm getting old now. <laughs> Stay young, Dina, stay young. Danielle Lari trying the off speed. It just gets it to float up a little bit. This is where you gotta see Danielle make an adjustment. Is that you can tell that Arizona's made a few adjustments is that Danny needs to come right here and get her adjustments going. And uh, Ariola takes a hack at that one. And uh, now Danielle Lurie has the deuces going for her. Two, two, and two outs. Crowd starting to get in as well. And on the deuces, Danielle Lurie delivers. And it's going to be strike three. Danielle gets herself out of trouble at the same time, picks up her fifth K of the game.
Welcome back. We're in the bottom of the second between Arizona and Washington. Let's take a look at our university bookstore record book and see how the Pac-10 standings are shaping up. Stanford and Oregon have already played today. They face Cal and Oregon State, and uh, both won, both by a score of 1-0. And uh, just like that, Nikki Williams comes out swinging, and that one is off the glove of Bridget Del Ponte. And uh, Nikki is going to head towards second because Kenzie Fowler in the circle uh, took her eye off her for just a second. Don't they know the Huskies in the back door, Betty? <laughs> Take a look at this. drives that pitch. It turns on it. And she, they throw. Oh, they would have had her a good throw, though. But here's the, the heads up play of Nikki is not going back and touching first base and knowing that she's a freshman and doesn't know about the Washington back door, Betty. <laughs> That is the rule if you are walking back towards first base, take off sprinting towards second as long as you do not reverse direction. You are safe. This one driven into left field and into Lake Washington. Shauna Wright with her eighth home run of the season. Her team greets her at home plate and pounds her on her helmet. It doesn't seem like a very nice greeting for a gal that just and you see her just turn on that inside pitch that I think that maybe the husband got the memo is that Kenzie Fowler's throwing first pitch strike because that's two first, first pitch strike hits. And maybe, just maybe, a, a mental lapse out of Kenzie Fowler for just one second after that hit and then the stolen base to second. And then all of a sudden, you know, you break your concentration for just a second and Shauna Wright takes advantage. Shauna Wright with a ton of power, eight doubles as well this season, and now has eight home runs to go with it. What do you say about Shauna? Shauna only likes to hit and run over in scoring position. That's a good time to hit. That is a great time to hit. Morgan Stewart keeps it going with the single back up the box. It seems like the Huskies were uh, figuring Kenzie Fowler out just a little bit. And maybe that Kendra is rethinking that decision to, uh, to start her on Saturday. The Huskies are just on time right now. So this is what happens with Pac-10. Someone has to make their adjustments. As they faced her yesterday, and the Huskies are coming around in the third inning and really starting to come get, get their timing together. And you take a look right there at uh, Teresa Wilson, the former head coach here at the University of Washington. She's used to making this trip out of the for your support and of course she's of used to coming out from the other dugout. She's going to have a, a talk with Kenzie Fowler and uh, maybe just get her to calm down just a little bit. <laughs> Teresa Wilson calling all the pitches for Kenzie, just like she did here at the University of Washington for so many pitchers. Remember that face? <laughs> From like, Coach Wilson. Yeah, that's that's just like a tradition of Coach Wilson. Well, what do you want to do? <laughs> now batting for the Huskies, first baseman number ten, Hooch Fogali. Morgan Stewart on first, and that is going to bring up Hooch Fogali. Everybody echo Hooch throughout the stadium. Who renamed her last weekend? I've heard some people call her Hooch. Really? Yes, they, they so, like the Hoover. It's catching on, huh? Hoops the Hoover is what I've been told. I yeah. said, yeah. it's the first alliteration. It rolls off the tongue. Hoops with a 302 average this season, at one home run, and 11 RBI. Fascinating story uh, about Hooch. It, it, Coach started telling me that she cannot believe how quickly she makes adjustments, but there's a reason behind that. Apparently her dad, when she wouldn't make an adjustment after a swing or two, would make her run to something, like run to a picnic table and uh, and go touch the picnic table and come back. So. Coach Star saying that she's just amazed at how quickly she will make uh, make these uh, these adjustments in her swing because she doesn't want to run. And there's Sarah Akamine getting warmed up over there in the Arizona bullpen. 
Cup. Back to oh, Boots, who's at, last night she had she scored the first run, and that's what happened. They just kept drilling her about three or four pitches inside, and they, they threw it again. And who drives it to left center to put the dogs at one nothing? Mm -hmm. She scored the run. Shauna Wright got actually hit by the pitch. Then they brought in a pitch runner, Maggie Wagner, who's made the second on a move that Stewart Stewart sack. And then Gucci's the one that singles her in with the drive to left field. Yeah, Hooch takes a look at this one, and she's going to head down to first base. And the Huskies with runners on first and second with no outs. for the Wildcats come in because you don't want this to get out of hand because a pitcher like Danielle Lurie is not going to give you a whole lot of opportunities to get back into this one. Absolutely. And not only that, this is one and two. So supposedly in the rankings, this is supposed to be the national championship game is that maybe this isn't Fowler's day going back to back is give her a break. Have her come out tomorrow. That'll bring up Amanda Fleischman, the second baseman for the Dogs, got 256 on the season. A couple of seniors at the bottom of the order, and Bailey Stenson and Amanda Fleischman. It sure is nice to have that experience down at the bottom of the order in front of Jen Salen. At the top. You usually see that in the lower lineup, it'll be younger kids, you know, trying to, oh, we'll just put them eight or nine. But right now, you have two veterans that have been to the World Series. Of course, one, a national championship with the dogs. So Amanda Fleischman goes to work here with no outs. And uh, her job right here, find a way to move the runners, right, Dina? Especially with no outs. Like, like, I, like I was saying the other day, is that Babe Ruth would have to bunt on my team. Mm -hmm. You see uh, Bridget Del Ponte, the third baseman, and Kaylee Arendondo, the shortstop uh, over on the left side of the infield trying to figure out who's going to cover third base on a bunt or a slapper. And that's, that's what uh, kind of chaos these slappers create. This one over the first base in time, but the job has been done. And the dogs with runners on second and third with two cracks to get them in. Amanda Fleischman doing a great job, Dina, of just giving herself up. Is that he, she had two strikes on her. That's clutch to get the bunt down with two strikes. Get the bunt down means get the bunt down. And I have to go, Coach Tar. Make her bunt. Well, if you are going to play and be successful at this level, you need to be able to execute the man that Fleischman does. And that's going to bring out Bailey Stinson, the right fielder for the dogs. And this is where that those left-handed batters come in so handy. They just confuse the defense. That you don't know, Bailey hits away, she slaps, you don't know what to do. Defense has to play straight away in the outfield because Bailey does have a little bit of pop. And uh, Bailey showing slap in her first pitch and then here swinging away. And the count one and one now. Again, runners on second and third. Looking for something to put up in the air, make contact with, tag. But well, Shauna's not too slow, or um, Morgan's not too slow. I would try to pull one, ride one to the right side. Of course you would, Dina. You made a career on that. <laughs> Never station to station with you. Station to station was runner on first base, and they're in scoring position for being Tyson. Why not swing as hard as you can every time? <laughs> This one driven into left field, and uh, Hooch Bagali is going to have to hold up just to make sure that went through on the left side. And uh, Bailey Stenson, the senior, coming through and picking up a huge RBI for the dogs. We talked about that veteran leadership at the bottom of the order. We saw execution and execution. And she does such a good job on that outside pitch, but I thought we trying to get it. But she stayed close and was like, hey, I'm going to get a base hit out of this. Base hit and an RBI for Bailey Stenson. And uh, there we are again at the top of the order with Jen Salling. You mentioned it on Shortstop, the top. Shortstop, number seven, And uh, this is not your uh, typical leadoff batter. Five doubles on the season, four triples on the season, six home run. Lots of power, gap to gap. And uh, she'll light you up over that fence as well. And so right now, this is an inning for the Huskies to try to get as many runs as possible because then it gives Bailey Harris even a chance to get into the game and give Danny a rest. Mm -hmm. Oh, now you're getting crazy. Now you're getting crazy on me. We're only in the second inning. 
And you're already ready to, ready to pull Danny. <laughs> Time to rest my golden arm. Jen Salling is gonna take a look at this one and Bailey Stenson steals second base. So now Jen Salling with two out there to drive in. Lots of speed in this Husky lineup. We're used to seeing speed up and down in this Wildcat lineup, but for the dogs, lots of rabbits. Including big hooch right there at third base. <laughs> Get ready for it to run on you. Jen Allen takes a look at this one. And all of a sudden now the count's three and zero. Oh. All right, you swinging or you taking? Taking. Do this not is the play only with softball gods. This is the only time I've ever heard you be conservative. I don't mess with softball gods. If they tell me to bunt, I'm gonna bunt. If they tell me to take, I'm gonna take. <laughs> Let's see what Jen Salling does. She didn't take it anything. She rips this one foul down the right field line. And Kenzie Fowler's gonna think twice about throwing that one again. I would have cried if that would have got caught. Because that's just playing with the softball gods. You and Jen Salling both <laughs> crying on that one if it was caught. But let me tell you this, whoever would have caught that one would have had to ice their glove hand. That ball smoked. So now let's see what Jen Salling gets on three and one. That one on the outside corner, she says no thank you. And she's gonna head down to first base and now the dogs with bases loaded and one out for Kimmy Pullman. I honestly would say he's the worst batter to have on the bases loaded. Like speed kills. No, it does. And it, I'm, I'm sure worst everybody. Worst if you're Arizona. If, yeah, if you're Arizona. Okay. For the Huskies, we're feeling good. Like you should, we're gonna at least get one here. But I, I'm sure the defense has no clue what to do right now. Well, we see they are, uh, have been pulled in with Kimmy Coleman at the back. And Kimmy taking her hacks over there. I don't know that we're gonna see her slap. And I love when Kimmy hits the way she knows it. I tell her every time. Kenzie Fowler trying to get an out here. And Kimmy Pullman wanted that one. A big swing and a miss. But now with the count 0 and 2, she needs to make contact. Yes, Kimmy, I appreciate the swing. I love it. Now use what you got to get what you want. Do that slap thing and get the defense all crazy. <laughs> See Kimmy Pullman showing bunt, shortening up her swing. This one in the outside corner, and we have ball one. So one and two on Kimmy. Dina Tyson has now stood up in the booth, and she is dancing. Absolutely. Keep it going, girls. You hear the chants and uh, the cheers going on. This one inside, and a beautiful pitch by Kenzie Fowler right there inside corner of the plate uh, and maybe because Kimmy Pullman couldn't get the bat head there she doesn't swing what a great pitch but it's going to go down his ball too Fowler's ERA 0.85 coming in taking a beating when you compare the numbers that she's used to putting up in the air run column given up two yesterday now she's given up three at least today Technically, I think only one of them were earned yesterday. But okay. you're right. I would have gave right. it a hit, though, but I'm not going to say anything. I'm maybe some home No, 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 it did. It did. She uh, she did certainly eat up Aaron Dondo, the shortstop. It, it did go down as an error on the shortstop. I know. It was heartbreaking. I think Nikki could have got a hit on that. That's actually a huge out for Kenzie Fowler, but then it brings up Danielle Lari. There's no hiding. You can't, you can't hide from this batting order. Now, and Danielle Lori is the kind of competitor that just lives for situations like this. So Danielle Lori, the pitcher in the circle on the other side, goes to work against Kinsey Fowler, pitcher in the circle for the Wildcats. I will take this opportunity to remind you that Danielle Lori has 11 home runs on the season, and that happens to lead this team. Danny told me she likes hitting off of her. Just heat, and she just, boom, she, she loves heat. Right, perhaps Kenzie knows that and is being very careful because she falls behind Danielle Lori 2-0. and oh. And if you're Danielle Lori right now, you got something in mind, and if you get it, you got a good idea of what you're going to do with it.
I guess, hey, give up one instead of five, four runs? So this is 3-0, take. No, take. I don't know what's the sign, take. <laughs> and I might take 3-1. No, not with Daria, hack. Bases loaded, you would have to think that you would at least want her to throw a strike before you take a hack. And uh, that is going to be strike one on Danielle Laurie. Like you said, probably gonna get that same exact pitch. <laughs> Take a good look at it, exactly. So uh, Kenzie probably just going for a strike there rather than uh, trying to paint the inside corner black. And that's gonna be ball four. And Kenzie Fowler walks in a run. Danielle Laurie with the great eye is given the RBI. Hey, this game's hard enough, right? Take the easy ones. And now my scorecard is completely messed up because Nikki Williams, who started this whole inning, is now up again. Could you imagine how heartbroken right now it is to be Arizona to see four runs? You're down four against, against Danielle Laurie. <laughs> so Nikki Williams, who singled off the glove of Bridget Del Ponte to start this inning and came around to score on the Shauna Wright home run, is back up again. And that is the demoralizing thing. Anytime any team bats around on you in the same inning, it hurts. Oh, that hurts. They gave Nikki Williams an error on her hit. That was a shot off the glove. I thought so as well. They're being tough on us. The home field's being tough on us here. It's all right, we'll take it. On base percentage goes up. We're giving evil eyes uh, to the, the score. See if we can't get that changed. Immediately. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Nikki Williams takes a hack at this one. And it looks like Kenzie Fowler is still kind of, uh, kind of searching for it, trying to find the strike zone. But I like Nikki's uh, approach. Why not attack? You got four on the board. You got three runners on. So go for a grand slam. I'm thinking grand slam. Apparently, Nikki thinking the same, but uh, we'll foul this one <laughs> off down the right field side and, and now has the count at one and two. But I do not want my young hitters thinking that. Just think contact. Now me, <laughs> I'm trying to go over the fence. <laughs> and often you did. Nikki Williams with the one, two counts. Kenzie Fowler. Trying to keep the ball away from Nikki. That's not a bad idea. It was very smart after yanking her inside pitch down the third base. At least she's making her adjustments. You'd love to see pitchers make adjustments at bat to a bat. <laughs> Nikki Williams trying to hit on the deuces against Kenzie Fowler. Fouls this one off. And uh, we're going to do it again. Huskies able to put four across here in the bottom of the second inning. The first two coming from a home run from Shauna Wright. And then a, a bit of hanging, hamming and egging from there. And this one popped up weakly down the left side of the field and Kaylee Arandondo, the shortstop, will track it down, but not before the Huskies put four up in the bottom of the second. Shauna Wright, the catcher for the Huskies, is batting higher in Pac-10 ball than she is overall, and uh, you see why. The Huskies lead it for nothing.
Welcome back. The Huskies put up four against Kenzie Fowler, and we now go to the top of the third, and Danielle Laurie will go to work inside the circle for the Huskies and uh, try to keep it that way. All right, she will face Carissa Buchanan, and then it's back to the top of the order, and Brittany with straps, Lauren Schutzler, and Kaylee Arandondo. And this is a big out right here. you got to find a way to get this number nine hitter before you face the top of the order. And just coming out and getting the first out after a big inning like that mm -hmm. is showing that, hey, that's because I'm not letting, a, I'm not going to let anything off here. Just because I have a four-run lead, I'm still coming right at you. Carissa Buchanan led the Wildcats last year with eight stolen bases. So lots of speed and a threat if she gets on. Danielle Laurie trying to keep her off. This Wildcat offense, the nation's highest scoring offense, averaging over eight runs a game. They're unbelievable sometimes. Hey, the Huskies aren't too bad either, averaging over six runs a game. They're, I believe, 11th currently. This one, she tries to bunt. Jen Salling is going to call for it. And uh, she's got that one easily, and the Huskies have their first out. And uh, as you mentioned, Dina, that's a huge out. Not only because you want to switch the momentum around, but also because of what you have coming up offensively now for the Wildcats. It's to make them, and Danny's actually kept this top of the lineup pretty quiet, is that, but making them start something. Making the top of the lineup say, hey, you're here for a reason, why don't you show me something? I'm not gonna let this seven, eight, and nine get on. Well, uh, Brittany Lestraps is, is one of those that has had a lot of success against everybody she's faced. Uh, nearly half the time she is on. 429 average right now. And it's not like she's just a, a little punch and Judy slapper. She's also got 12 bombs on the season too. Is it Brittany has increased her home runs every year. And you saw that swing she put on that one right there, but uh, she goes down the same way she did the first time in her first at bat in the first inning, three unassisted. And that's why we, and when I say we, I mean Dina and I call her Hoover, right? Everybody else calls her Hooch, and we call her Hoover, and this is why. Yes, you see Brittany just, ooh, she, see, I kind of cheer for Brittany sometimes just because it's my best friend's sister, but Hoover just wraps it up. Sucks that ball up, and that was a, a good swing on that one. Danielle Laurie fielding her position, and with no room for error, throws out Lauren Schutzler, and just like that, the Wildcats are retired. Welcome back, friends. We are in the bottom of the third between Washington and Arizona. And uh, the weather's perfect for, uh, for a little sail on the lake. It says that it is in the bottom of the third, but of course my scoring sheet, I have the bottom of the fourth because the Huskies batted around in the second and now my numbers are all messed up. I'll get it sorted. I don't mind having that problem. Uh, because of all the problems, we've got a new pitcher in the circle, Sarah Akamine, with her 11-2 record. 
steps inside the circle. Nine walks to 55 strikeouts. She takes over for Kenzie Fowler, who uh, just uh, was having trouble, quite frankly, Dina, against the Huskies today. Which I think is a smart move, is that she's a freshman, and you don't want to have her just pretty much the Huskies look like they were on time. Mm -hmm. Is that you don't want the Huskies to have too much confidence against her. And you might as well put in, actually, Sarah Akamini, I respect her. She came in, and she wasn't even supposed to pitch. They had some issues, and she's pitched since she's been on campus now. She came in to play the position, and now she's pitched her whole career. By the way, I was uh, I was in awe because I was thinking that Shauna Wright was going to have her second home run of the game right there. Instead, uh, it stays within the ballpark, and she flies out to left field, and that will bring up Morgan Stewart for the Huskies. And uh, Morgan Stewart, the junior, uh, I don't know, you call her a ball magnet? She's been hit by eight pitches. Morgan takes it for the team. Like I said, I'm not that player. I'm, that's probably the fastest you'll ever see me move. I'm not getting hit by that ball. <laughs> Especially with the, the pitchers are fast nowadays. <laughs> so uh, Sarah Akamine not struggling with, uh, with her control. She jumps out on top of Morgan Stewart 0 oh and 2 and uh, Morgan strike Morgan Stewart will be her first strikeout victim. Now to bring up Hooch Fagali, the freshman designated player today. What a great play song. <laughs> Nothing but a hoochie mama. And this one driven to right field and uh, against the wall. What an amazing attempt by Carissa Buchanan. And lucky for Carissa, they just put pads out there on the outfield wall because that used to be a wooden wall. And uh, it, I mean, she went after this ball like she had no idea she was running out of time and space. What an amazing attempt right there. She runs right into the W. She can't come up with it, but uh, she probably Especially will when remember she went ball. after it. <laughs> she probably <laughs> remembers tomorrow that she went after that because that one's gonna hurt just a little bit. All that hustle for a foul ball too. Good work. A tremendous attempt. Coach Candrea will come out and make sure she's all right. It sure did look like it hurt. You know how important outs are in the Pac-10. You just saw it. Yeah, a good point, Dina. Uh, it, a ball driven about as well as you can drive it opposite field by Hooch Fagali. And, uh, Hooch Fagali taking a look at strike two. And uh, I will say this already about Sarah Akamine. She's working ahead of these Husky hitters. That's probably four years of experience. Mm -hmm. She knows she has to start ahead, not being one of the hardest throwers that she finds her spots and she's gonna hit her spots. All right, the Huskies uh, with two outs. But the important thing I think in the top of this third was that the Huskies came back and defensively shut the door against the Wildcats. Go one, two, three, just like, hey, this is our game. Uh, apparently the Huskies are going to do the same thing. No, they aren't. Yes, they are. Looked like she might have not had control, but uh, Hooch Fagali is going to head back to the dugout, and we are going to head to the top of the fourth.
Welcome back. Huskies are on top of the Arizona Wildcats for nothing. And it's time again for a Sports Medicine Minute brought to you by UW Medicine. And uh, we are joined by Dr. Robin Fayen, a UW fellow at the University of Washington. Um, explain this to me. We're always uh, hearing about treating these athletic injuries. What's better? heat or ice because I believe Carissa Buchanan the right fielder after she just ran into the wall may need one both or uh, <laughs> or I, others I think you're right um, I like to break it down into acute injuries versus chronic injuries and so acute injuries are things that have happened recently and those things are um, usually associated with a lot of inflammation and swelling and those are best treated with ice what ice does is it helps to constrict blood vessels so it makes them smaller and it decreases the blood flow and therefore it decreases inflammation and, and swelling heat does the opposite it actually makes the blood vessels better Bigger, it'll bring more blood, blood flow to the area. And so you don't want to do that for an acute injury. But for something that's been going on for a long time that causes a lot of stiffness and, and uh, muscle spasm, heat would be a good choice. Okay, so the acute injury probably that uh, Carissa Buchanan just have ice today if she continues to have problems with it, heat. Yes, down the road, <laughs> but ice today. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. We really appreciate it. Dr. Fayan with thank the you. University of Washington, a UW fellow in sports medicine here. All right, and uh, just like that, we have out number one, Danielle Laurie, still in the circle for the Huskies. And uh, that will bring up Stacy Chambers, the catcher for the Wildcats. Kaylee Arandondo flying out to left field and Kimmy Pullman out there. Stacy Chambers struck out against Danielle Laurie, strikeout victim number three. That's her distinction so far in this game, Dina. But you know she has it in her somewhere, so this is where Danny, you see she's still she's pretty smart about it, where she's going to get it, where she's going to put the location of this pitch because one mistake, as we saw last night, she had one of the RBI hit, is that me, Danny was watching tape on her and was like, whoo, missed on my rise ball, and she just laced it, that Danny knows she can't miss on this kid. No, and Danielle Lurie all day today doing a very good job of working ahead of these Wildcat hitters. And this one just misses outside and the count goes to two and one. Danielle Lori wanted to make sure uh, she understood where she missed on that one. So far through three and a thirds, just one hit, one walk, and uh, the five strikeouts. Danielle Lori picking up strike number two there. So uh, whatever she missed on the pitch before, she seems to have figured out. So that goes, or the count goes, two and two. Stacey Chambers working the count to full. And if you're the University of Arizona Wildcats, you're not trying to get all four runs back in an inning. But at this point, you got to start chipping away just a little bit. At least getting some base runners on so you can move them over. Right now, Danny's just pretty much shut the door, and someone's going to have to bunt, do, do something to try to get on base. Take a look at uh, the ball ricocheting off of the foot of uh, Stacey Chambers. That hurts. Yeah, I call those self-inflicted, so I don't even have, no, nope, I don't really feel bad for you. Get your <laughs> barrel out. <laughs> I remember I came home, I had a huge swell on my leg, and my dad said, I don't care, let's go, let's hit. It's your fault, you hit yourself. All right, Stacey Chambers is uh, going to work a, a walk out of Danielle Laurie, just her second walk of the game. And uh, Arizona has their first base runner since the second inning. All right, uh, taking a look at uh, when we get to see you again. <laughs> April 11th, that's tomorrow. Uh, game time is at noon. And then Oregon and Oregon State come to town at the beginning of May. And then the 8th and 9th, we'll see Stanford. So this weekend, we see the former head coach of the University of Washington, Teresa Wilson, who's now the pitching coach for the Wildcats. And uh, then when Stanford comes to town, former assistant coach John Rittman makes his way back to the Northwest. Everyone wear purple. This is actually the first Wildcat, and I'm, I'm not talking about Bridget DePonte at uh, home plate, but Stacy Chambers out at first. She is the first Wildcat to reach after a first pitch strike from Danielle Laurie to start the at-bat. Gives you an idea of how effective you could be as a pitcher. Then you just have to have uh, stuff like Danielle Laurie when you throw first pitch strikes. 
And then have a team that puts up four runs in the back 10 because that's so normal. <laughs> you know, I, I mentioned it before. There are two players for the Huskies, Shauna Wright being one of them, Amanda Fleischman the other, that actually have better stats in Pac-10 play than they do in the overall statistics. That's pretty amazing. Usually you have a great big inflated batting average going into Pac-10 play, and then you, know, you, you may start out something fantastic like 460, and then it's like 442, and 437. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's you're you're doing one for three and one for four versus two for three, and, and that's why uh, some people say the Pac-10. Oh, their preseason schedule is so weak because they have to get their stats up before they play each other. <laughs> I wouldn't exactly uh, call it weak either. That's what I say. I say just because we're ranked higher doesn't mean that we can't help what we're ranked. <laughs> like, oh, they never play ranked teams because we play each other in conference. Bridget DePonte is just a freshman, third baseman for the Wildcats. And, and Dina pointed out, I can't believe that she's been able to do statistically what she has been able to do so far this season. About 406 with 15 home runs, 55 RBI. Er, she's out of Peoria, Arizona, which is where the Mariners have their spring training complex down there. Arizona has to be excited about the future of this program. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, because they're very young and very talented. This one, a little dribbler over to third base. Morgan Stewart charges it and throws out uh, Bridget Del Ponte at first base. But in the process, Stacy Chambers is going to move over into scoring position at second. But the dogs with two outs and an opportunity to get out of here without letting a run across. Lini Correa comes to the plate, walked in her first plate appearance. Now batting 253 on the season. I guess that number stays just where it is. Walks don't count as an at-bat. Ups the on-base percentage, which is good. It does. Danielle Lurie getting the strike even at one and one. And she's gotten through the heart of the order with uh, Bridget Del Ponte grounding out to third base. But uh, there's still a little meat on this bone with uh, Lini Correa. Her and the batter coming up is that Bailey Kirker is that you know these girls have power, so you can never just have an bat off. That's to be tough as a pitcher is that you have to concentrate really on every batter that comes up. Now Coach Kendra telling me before this game that he really feels that uh, a lot of time at this level, it takes a kid till their junior year before they really reach their full potential as a ball player. And, and he doesn't have too many of, uh, of those that have reached their junior and senior year. A few juniors, but uh, down here at the bottom of the order, it goes freshman, sophomore, freshman, sophomore, freshman, sophomore, sophomore. On the deuces, Danielle Lurie gets a foul ball down the left field line, so we'll get to do it again. Danielle Lurie reminding everybody she's got two outs. And uh, here we go again on the two, two, and two. Arizona with a runner in scoring position, trying to chip away at a 4 nothing lead, and they will not. Instead, Lini will become Danielle Lurie's sixth strikeout. We're headed to the bottom of the fourth. Huskies lead 4 nothing.
Welcome back. The Huskies looking to add on to their 4 nothing lead. And I'm really bad. I never know if those are the Cascades or Olympics. I've only lived here for 15 years. All right, during last weekend's game against UCLA, we asked you a trivia question about the Husky softball team. Did you know what year the team had its inaugural season? Was it 1973, 1978, 1987, or 1993? The answer is I'm not that old because I was part of that team. The winning answer came from Rita Birch of Lacey, Washington with the right answer. Congratulations, Rita. You will receive a $100 gift certificate to the university bookstore. So let's see uh, how well you do on this week's question. See if you can answer this. How many conference championships can the Husky softball team claim? This is conference championships. One, two, five, or three. For the answer, visit uwtv.org slash softball for a chance to win a $100 gift certificate to the University of Bookstore. And I had to tell HT that she was not eligible to win because she said that she knew the question to last week's. And I said, you know. Sorry, HT, no $100 gift certificate to the University Bookstore, but I'm sure that, you know, they'll probably float you a, a Husky softball sweatshirt if you're really nice to them in there. I feel like I should keep a laptop up here and those questions come up and answer it. <laughs> I really knew that without looking at the answer. Part of one while you were here? I'm not saying one, two, three, four, five. I'm not answering the questions. No. But were you? No. Okay. No. So not, not a Pac-10 champion, or there was not a Pac-10 championship while Dina played here. I don't really think that gives anybody a good hint, though, no. as to the total number. You're going to have to look that one up. All right. So uh, Amanda Fleischman uh, up uh, for the Huskies, and before we even have an opportunity to talk about her, She's uh, she's headed back to the dugout, but without uh, not without saying something really quickly to Bailey Stinson. I wonder what she was telling her. Maybe what uh, what she was throwing slappers or what her approach was. There you go. You see the leadership is that this is Sarah's first time in the game facing Amanda. As Amanda passes on, is that hey she's probably a little slower. Is that we're gonna have to slow down in the box? Mm -hmm. Interesting. So uh, Bailey Stenson uh, looks to drop one there, goes after it. So uh, strike one against Bailey. If uh, if this doesn't do it for you, if you need more Bailey Stenson, don't worry about it. You can go to uh, Breaking It Down with Bailey. You can go check that out on GoHuskies.com. Standing room only here. And that's going to be the same story tomorrow as well. This is a hot ticket. Try to get my husband and kids in. I got no pull. None whatsoever. Said sorry, we're we're sold out. To be a national champion, everyone wants to see a national champion now. <laughs> well, if you don't see another game uh, this year, you you want to come and watch these two teams play. And I was going to tell you this is that the only time when I played, the games were really sold out were UCLA and Arizona. So sometimes kind of hurt our feelings because we kind of knew like, hey. Games aren't usually this full. Only when UCLA and Arizona's in town. So who are you coming to see? That just but now we too. know. <laughs> they are here to see the Huskies. It's just you know when these two teams play, you're going to get a great game. Sarah Akamine tries to throw the change up and it just floats a little bit high on Bailey Stenson. So she works the count to two and two. Bailey with a huge RBI in her first at bat. And then ended up stealing second base as well. Bailey is swinging a miss and is going to be strikeout victim number three for Sarah Akimine, who came in for Kenzie Fowler. And uh, the changeup in speed or look or whatever seems to be working for the Wildcats. Is that you definitely see that a lot? Is that when you bring in a pitcher that's so different from the first pitcher, is that it takes the team a couple times to come around and really start to get it going. Jen Salling, who walked in the second and struck out in the first, comes up here in the fourth. And you sometimes it can sense this lull in a team where all of a sudden they put up four, they know they've got Danielle Laurie in the circle, and so they're like, all right, let's just finish the game rather than, all right, let's keep 
putting runs up on the board. You feel pretty good about getting four up on Arizona with Danielle in the circle. And if Arizona's smart, is that they should be able to feel this low. I think everyone kind of feel like, oh, we have four runs this game. It's pretty much over. It's probably what's being thought in the Husky dugout is that maybe coming out and really trying to make something happen the next inning. Because around the fifth and sixth, and so once you start getting around the later innings and Danny has a 4-0 lead, the chances of coming back lessens and lessens. And I want to be clear. Those are not the thoughts inside the head of Heather Tarr as she talks to Jen Sally. <laughs> she wants to keep adding on and adding on and adding on. But I think it's just natural as a player, like, oh, good, we got four against a team like Arizona because you know that your chances are going to be few and far between offensively against a team like this as well. And Danny spoiled them. Is it usually <laughs> they don't have to score two. Like, Danny, we gave you four. You're good now. <laughs> right, you're good. You got this, right? We're just going to be hanging out over here. And uh, Jen Salling goes down as well. So Akamine strikes out the side here in the fourth. Arizona coming to bat. Welcome back. We're in the top of the fifth inning with the top-ranked Washington Huskies leading Arizona for nothing. And uh, a few rules that are unique to softball. These things uh, differ from the sport of baseball. The mercy rule, eight-run lead after five innings. Um, you can re-enter if you started the game one time. We have the designated player versus the designated hitter. You cannot lead off. You have to leave the base. Uh, once it leaves the pitcher's hand, you have slappers. And then you have that thing called the pitching lane. We've heard of the batter's box, and then in softball, there's the pitching lane. This is actually relatively new as well. It technically has always been there, but you haven't seen those lines actually coming out of the pitching rubber like they have now. Game length, seven innings, by the way. 60-foot base pass, 43 feet from the rubber to home plate. Let's talk about the pitching lane because in some small way, it, it kind of originated from one of the teams here. Arizona. This is one of those rules that she really called the Taryn Moet rule. Because mm -hmm. Taryn was known to kind of get outside those lines. So after she graduated, coincidence, they started putting the lines on. Yeah, and so if any part of your heel steps outside of that line, then uh, it is an illegal pitch. So Bailey Kirker, by the way, the only Wildcat with a hit today versus Danielle Laurie. They have, uh, <laughs> they've been hard to come by, and that is an understatement. This one up top. But, Dan uh, Danielle actually no hit them last year. It was the first time since 2000 that they've ever been no hitting. Yes, and she also uh, no hit the UCLA Bruins up here last year. And you think about it, no hitting Arizona or no hitting UCLA, and it's just, it's madness. It's crazy as Danielle Laurie gets another strikeout. And, uh, you know, she hadn't had one in a while, quite frankly. She hasn't had one since the second inning. But through the second, she had five. <laughs> second baseman, number five, Kristen Ariola. 
when Danny gets in that rhythm, she really gets in that rhythm. Is that she sometimes becomes unhittable for like three innings. And you just kind of got to deal with the Ks. <laughs> I feel like the heating coach, I would say that, hey, you know we're going to take our Ks today. And this one popped up into shallow center field. Jen Salling, the shortstop, calling everybody off. And Ariola will uh, head back to the dugout. And that's going to bring up Carissa Buchanan to the dish. Now, uh, remind me the hierarchy out there. Shortstop has priority over everybody in the infield, right? Yes. And Center the fielder has a priority over everyone. Allison, take it from her. But if the right fielder wanted to come in, they have priority over all of the infielders, right? Right and left field have priority over any infielder. I say outfield, center fielder. Yeah, outfield yep. should have priority over all infielders. Absolutely. Maybe that's just the outfielders that's speaking. Can you imagine <laughs> if outfielders went back after balls like infielders do? Oh my <laughs> goodness. A zoo. This one slapped Morgan Stewart, picks it up and throws it over to first base in time. And uh, just like that, the Wildcats are retired in order. Welcome back. We're in the bottom of the fifth inning. Huskies leading this one 4 nothing. Take a look at uh, who's done what offensively so far for the Dogs. Uh, the big blow, Shauna Wright with a two-run home run. And uh, Morgan Stewart also one for two with a, an RBI. And uh, Bailey Stenson also knocking one in for the Huskies. And uh, we're up near the top of the order. Kimmy Pullman will lead things off for the Dogs. Is that the Huskies have four runs on only three hits. And that's what you talk about hitting when runners are in scoring position being clutch hitters. Yeah, they have made the most of their opportunities today. That is for sure. Kimmy Pullman waves at strike one. And uh, she said that the reason why she started playing softball was because her older sister Danny did it. And she wanted to be like her older sister Danny, so. She uh, <laughs> she started playing softball as well. Well, it worked out for her. <laughs> I think so. I think she picked. I think the she right should sport. thank thank Danny a lot. <laughs> <laughs> thank her for her scholarship. Thank her for this opportunity. Uh, Kimmy Pullman, also a uh, a ball girl for the Washington uh, or for the Washington for the Seattle Mariners, who will be coming home on Monday. Yes, opening day at Safeco Field. It's a great reason to play hooky from work. There's only one opening day. Yeah, Arizona baseball team also uh, playing up here and uh, lost to the Dogs 7-2, I believe, was the final. Excuse me, the Dogs lost to them, that's right. I saw that on the Arizona Wildcats. I think they Cats won today, website. though. That the Huskies the won today? I think the Huskies won today, 10-2. 
Yes, they got him back. Ten to two. That a baby dogs. So that series evened up at one apiece. And uh, this count is even at two apiece. Two so balls, two strikes. Kimmy slaps this one to second, and uh, Ariola making a fine play coming up and picking her hop and taking the short hop to get Kimmy Pullman. That ball bounces again, and, and uh, she jogs to first. You have to get the big hop, and you have to be perfect on your release and everything, and she did everything right to make that play. Well, you can see the kind of speed that Kimmy Pullman has on the way to first base because that ball was hit to the right side of the infield, and she was still thrown out by just a half a step. Sure, it's not one of those things like you have time, though. Get rid of it. <laughs> no room for error whatsoever with slappers. And that's going to bring up Danielle Lori. Danielle walked in a run in the second and also uh, popped up into foul territory in her first at bat in the first. Danielle was the second to last batter that uh, Kenzie Fowler faced right after that second inning. That's when we saw Sarah Akamine come in for the Wildcats. And uh, since then, she's been able to retire the dogs in order. Then hats off to, to Sarah Akamene to come in and really shut it down. Because seeing the way the Huskies were hitting, I might have been a little nervous to come in. Mm -hmm. But she's come in and shut it down. And it'll be interesting to see who Mike Candrea goes with tomorrow? Is that trying to maybe get that W just to say that you got one on your belt? It's tough getting completely swept. Well, like uh, Mike Candrea said, this is a really important series. Uh, a lot of people are pointing to these two teams um, as, as being the top two in the nation uh, at the end of the year. They are, of course, the two top two teams right now, but. Uh, a lot of people expect these two teams to be in that national championship game. This one driven into right field, and Carissa Buchanan is going to be able to cut it off, so Danielle Laurie held to a single. But uh, the Huskies' offense showing signs of life now against Akamine. You see the Husky, there you go, Danny, not trying to do too much, is that people coming out here and they see a slower pitcher and sometimes try to swing for the fences, and sometimes you just got to take what she gives you. Mm -hmm. And Danny does so much more than just pitch. Yeah. She's gotten a hit in every game so far this series. Danielle Laurie makes adjustments uh, in the circle. We see her make them, you know, from at bat to at bat. She's got two hits in the last two games. Maggie Wagner, who came in as a pinch runner in yesterday's game, will uh, come in and, and uh, do it again. Hopefully she will score again, just like she did last night. She came in as a pinch runner for Shauna Wright, who got hit by a pitch and uh, scored the Huskies' first run. Danielle Laurie, by the way, retired the side in the seventh and finished the game with the strikeout on her 100th pitch to improve to 21-1 and one on the season. Her only blemish in the opening weekend of Pac-10 play against the UCLA Bruins. Danny has really been unbelievable sometimes. That you, she, she hits the ball, she pitches well. There's no stopping her. And you know she's not a hitter that lets her hitting get to her. Well, I mean, she's not doing bad enough to really let it get to her. But even if she does have a bad at-bat, she still goes out there that next inning and shuts down the, def the offense of the next of the other team. Mm -hmm. See the uh, the foul ball, Nikki Williams uh, fouls off of her front foot. Uh, Lori's game has helped her a step beyond where most kids are in college. That wasn't Heather Tarr telling me that before the game. That was Mike Candrea, and he would know as uh, the head coach of the U.S. national team. Of course, softball is uh, no longer an Olympic sport. They lost the funding of the USOC. I asked him if uh, if he thought that they would get it back. He said, sadly, probably not. Um, it, it would take a change in leadership as, as Teresa Wilson goes out for a meeting on the mound with her pitcher, Sarah Akamine. But uh, what happened, they went, they took a vote behind closed doors. Uh, instead, rugby and golf entered the Olympic world and softball was out. And uh, in Mike Candrea's where he said, I don't think softball could have done any more. They, they won the silver 
in Beijing. What do you think Teresa Wilson is talking with Sarah Akamine about? Is this just how they want to handle Nikki Williams? And let's be really careful here. I would say maybe just just trying to get her to hey, okay, you've got you've given up a hit. Let's not try to give up back to back hits. Mm -hmm. Is that just settle in there? You got two strikes on her. Be smart. Let's see what uh, Sarah Akamune does. By the way, Wagner, who just stole her eighth stolen base, is now eight for ten on stolen bases. I was getting ready to say she was seven of nine. She is now eight of ten. <laughs> she is an athlete. Another great read. You just see how quick her steps are. She's speedy. Like her father played football at Washington State, so she is a huge, they don't have a huge family of athletes. Sometimes you'll notice that about some home run swingers. They'll swing at some bad stuff, but it just looks, you're just thinking home run, so you're not even really thinking about what pitch is coming. You just want to swing for the fences. Shauna Wright, why not? She's got a two-run home run. And uh, she's the one that got the Huskies on the board. As we said before, Shauna is one of the three top home run hitters in the, in the state of California in high school. She's showing us her power. Even though she's number three on the list. She's yeah. hitting like she's number one. Shauna Wright uh, hitting 295 coming into this game overall, but 333 in the Pac-10. So actually better inside the conference against the nation's best pitchers than she is uh, uh, against some of the second and third tier pitchers around the nation. Amazing. Said, I think the Huskies, it was a good schedule. You know, it's tough doing the three games straight now, but to get UCLA and Arizona out the way. <laughs> My goodness. And uh, she is going to be retired, and the Huskies are as well here in the fifth inning. They get a runner over to second, but no further. We are headed to the top of the sixth. In the top of the six and the Arizona Wildcats are running out of time. They are six outs away from losing this series to the dogs. You got to cat. You got to find a way right here to get one run across two runs across. You got to especially you're not going to get four back it, uh, against Danielle Laurie in, in the, the seventh. seventh. <laughs> yes. And, but what's great is that I just got a text from Dominique Lestraps right when her sister is up. She said, hello, Seattle. <laughs> so we'll pass that on to you. 
Dominique Lestraps, the older sister of Brittany Lestraps, a former Husky. All-American, mm -hmm. my roommate. <laughs> you put those two in the same sentence. An All-American and my roommate. Yeah. <laughs> 0 for 2 with two ground outs uh, so far. Both of them going three unassisted. Both of them hit hard to Hooch Fagali down at first base. But uh, both sucked up and, and uh, both uh, handled easily by the person we affectionately call Hoover. Everybody else calls her Hooch, but we're calling her Hoover. Hooch the Hoover. <laughs> It's really saying something that uh, Danielle Lord has been able to retire her twice because not a lot of pitchers can say that about Brittany. Yes, coming into this, Brittany was hitting 450 against Washington for her career. Amazing job, and again, not just for average, but uh, she's got some amazing power as well. And uh, Danielle Laurie hopping around in the circle, thought she had strike three instead. She's going to have to work a little bit harder for it in the counts of two and two. On base percentage for Brittany, 531. So again, Danielle Laurie already, uh, already fighting the averages. This one to shortstop and Jen Salling. Jen Salling takes a couple steps back and she's got it. And uh, threat retired. Who's faster, Brittany or Dominique? You're putting me in a tough situation I, here. Hey, I just want you to tell the truth, buddy. Jen Salling, nice play right there. I would definitely say um, even. <laughs> that was so chicken, wasn't it? <laughs> that was chicken. That was terrible. All right, Gutless. I'm going to go with Dominique. She's my roommate, best friend. I have to say Dominique. <laughs> so uh, Dominique gets the title there. Uh, I think uh, Brittany Lestraps had a higher batting average and more home runs, though. But we'll give Dominique the title for fastest. All right, uh, so far, not a whole lot of success. In fact, Kirker with the only hit so far against Danielle Laurie. And uh, Danielle on her way to her eighth strikeouts of the game. I was talking to Danny earlier today, and she said that she has to come out here and make some adjustments. She said those slappers on this team really drive me crazy because Lauren Schutzler actually had two hits against Danny yesterday. It's interesting uh, that the Huskies are going to throw Danielle Lurie, presumably, all three games. Uh, Last year, UCLA was the Pac-10 champs. Huskies won the national champs, but it seems that, hey, you know, first things first, let's win the conference championship. Then we'll worry about the national championship. On another note, this could be Coach Tarr thinking this is this is their change of the tide. If they can sweep and really sweep the Wildcats 3-0, mm -hmm. is that we have to be confident going into postseason after that is that sure. we swept the number two team in the nation. Yeah, if you're the Arizona Wildcats offensively, you're thinking, man, we have we have faced Danielle three times and we haven't been able to get anything going. That's the last person we want to face at the College World Series, the last person we want to see in the circle. And no. it's the first person that she wants to see every single day in the circle. We love HT until they say the game is over. She still has that intense look. The game is not over until they say it's over. I guess no fat lady screams. No, it's got to be an interesting weekend for Coach Tar with uh, Teresa Wilson, uh, her head coach while she was here as a player at the University of Washington in the other dugout for the Wildcats. And uh, the Wildcats get a base runner in Lauren Schutzler over at first base. That's just the second hit of the game Danielle Laurie has allowed. And that's going to bring up Kaylee Arandando, the shortstop, the lone senior out in the field for the Wildcats today. She's been to the World Series all three years of her career so far. Oh, that's because Mike Candre has taken his team to the College World Series 21 out of the last 22 years. An amazing record. Eight national championships. There used to be, uh, you know, a really, a really, uh, you know, a big, a big showing from Pac-10 teams. Um, that's always sort of been the case at the top. Um, but uh, but maybe now you see a lot more of them sprinkled in throughout the standings. You know, you used to have UCLA, maybe in Arizona, but now you have Washington. You also have ASU in Stanford. 
and uh, Oregon now is playing really well. And uh, she goes down on strikes, and Stacy Chambers, the catcher, one of the few people that's uh, been able to reach base against Daniela Laurie, will step in. She walked in the fourth inning. Speaking of Stacey Chambers earlier with her 31 home runs, is that she had 96 RBIs, which was really, she just tied for fifth in the Arizona record books for that. I'm telling you, the Arizona record books, I mean, <laughs> you, look at, uh, you look at what some players have done offensively, and it's just mind-boggling. It's not like they were the only one on the team doing it. I'm, I'm not kidding you. I usually, I'm used to just seeing Arizona come up here with every single person hitting 400. I don't know what Mike Candrea does, sprinkles magic offensive dust on them when they get in there, but uh, they have put up some really crooked numbers offensively, and it's no surprise again this year that they lead the nation in scoring offense. But you know what they say, pitching's 99% of this game. It really is. That good pitching would outweigh good hitting all day. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Huskies have the best in the circle for them today. You know what you have to love about the Husky Stadium is that for nothing, you probably, most people will be like, you know, this game's over. Let's try to go get something to eat or beat the traffic. But look, they all are here. I don't think no one's moved. No, 1,500 people, 1,499 in attendance today to see this game. Game all, all the games this weekend sold out, standing room only. And Danielle Laurie strikes out Stacy Chambers, no doubt in Danielle Laurie's mind, as she was already halfway in the dugout before the umpire called it. Welcome back. The University of Washington Huskies are just three out away from taking two of three from the Arizona Wildcats this weekend. But uh, first, they'll get another crack at Sarah Akamine in the circle. Hey, uh, this is when you can see us next, April 11th versus Arizona. That's tomorrow. And May 1st and 2nd, the Huskies will host Oregon State. We'll bring those games to you. And then on the 8th and 9th, Stanford comes to town at 4 p.m. and uh, noon on Sunday the 9th. And we'll have those for you as well. By the way, all the teams that you see right there on your screen are within the top 20 nationally. Well, it's no real surprise because five <laughs> Pac-10 teams are in the top 10, and there's only eight. So uh, only eight anyway that have softball. I should correct myself. USC and Washington State without softball programs. So five of the eight in the top 10 and seven of the eight in the top 20. Could you imagine if USC started a team? They'd be awesome tomorrow. It's because there are a lot of uh, you know great softball players that probably would like to go to USC versus UCLA. It's that whole you know rivalry. Same thing here in the state of Washington. There's so much good talent in the state of Washington and a lot of them are Cougs and would love to go and play at Washington State, but they don't have that opportunity, so they're coming here. Or they're up in Canada, like Jen Salling and Danielle Laurie, and uh, 
they don't have those same opportunities to go and get a full ride scholarship and play softball, and so they get to come down here as well. Right now, Morgan Stewart, the third baseman for the Huskies at the plate. And uh, she works herself a walk, and uh, the Huskies are gonna start out with a base runner. Four straight balls. Yep. Taking. Make her throw a strike. Take a look at this replay. We're wondering. Now you can you can kick your leg out of that pitcher's lane, but as long as your leg doesn't land. Sarah's flirting. She's she's flirting with the line. She's flirting with the line. Well, it'd be really hard to call right now because the lines are gone. This one off of the glove of Kaylee Arandondo. And Hooch Fagali reaches base for the second time today. Take a look here, middle of the inside, and just yanks it. And you see her take advantage of the shortstop cheating towards second a little bit. Is it the Huskies are smart hitters? They find the holes. Yeah, Morgan Stewart with pretty good speed on first base. So Kaylee Arandondo has to take a step or two towards second base just to make sure she's there in enough time on the steal. And that's going to bring up Amanda Fleischman, the second baseman for the Dogs. Huskies not ready to call this a game yet. In the sixth inning. They, uh, they got a little something going. And we're going to get a pinch runner. Ashley Tuiasa Sopo is coming in to run for Hooch. I think she's coming in to hit. In, um, in oh, excuse me. Excuse me, you're right. Ashley is coming in to hit. And McWhorter, who is the center fielder for the Huskies, can come in for Hooch Fagali because she is the DP, and Hooch will still be able to go out to first base. They are interchangeable as many times as uh, they would like to do that. I feel like Ashley Tuyasopo doesn't even need anything said about her. Just her last name says it all. <laughs> the uh, younger brother of Marcus, Matt, Zach. Zach. Leslie. Let's not forget Leslie. Leslie, Leslie oh. is the one that started it all. The uh, she was She is the older sister of Marcus Tuiasa Sopo and played for the volleyball team, is now on the staff as an assistant coach. And uh, Manu is always in the stands and is in the stands again today. We've seen him today. And uh, Jaren Faasua is on deck as well. So Heather Tarr using this lead here in the sixth inning to uh, get some of her players some Pac-10 at-bats. And that's what you love about Coach Tarr is that she gives their players opportunities. But then that's a good job to the Huskies at start is that you give your teammates chances to hit the ball when you do your job. Mm -hmm. When she smiles, you just love those dimples. I mean, you, she rarely smiles in the middle of the game, but when you get to see it, it's a special, special surprise. Look at those dimples. <laughs> Heather Tarr rooting them on. Runners with at first and second for the dogs with nobody out. And even though this would normally be, even with a 4 nothing lead, it could be a bunt situation. Heather Tarr wants to see Ashley Tuiasa Sopo swing the bat. That's what she put her in there for. You never really put it unless they were a tough game and you know that your number four batter might not be that good at bunching. You might mm -hmm. do a pinch hit bunt, but you're in the bottom of the six, up by four. Go get your swings in. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what Ashley Tuiasa Sopo will do. And uh, what a fantastic job of base running by Morgan Stewart because that could have been a double play right there for the Wildcats. But instead, Morgan Stewart backs all the way up so she only gets one. Bridget Del Ponte gets a hot shot right back Ashley. Ashley Tuiasa Sopo puts a great swing on this. And then Morgan Stewart's got to run now because, uh, of course, uh, there's a force out at third. But then she stays in the rundown long enough to allow the runners to get to first and second. That was very smart of Morgan Stewart to keep the, keep the inning going. Mm -hmm. We've talked about the fact that uh, double plays don't happen very often in this game. But uh, those are one of the balls that it could happen on for sure. <laughs> that ball was absolutely smoked down the, uh, down the left field line. And you get an idea of that Tuiasa Sopo 
power and athleticism from that swing, don't you? And just being heads up, being a pinch runner, and to come out and lace a ball like that, just to be on time is amazing. Yeah, so Amanda Fleischman uh, will come back into the game for Tuiasa Sopo. And uh, Bailey Stenson will exit the game. And Jaren Fa'asua batting for her. Another freshman Coach Tar has on the squad from Oceanside, California. Fa'asua, just a freshman, but uh, Coach Tar really likes what this kid's made of and what she's been able to do and the chances that she's been given. Also plays second base, has seen some time out there defensively as well. Jenny Clifton is usually another one we see right off the bench. Got a couple home runs for Jaron already on this season, so don't be surprised if we see one in Lake Washington here. She had a pinch hit single against UCLA too. Is that you gotta love what these pinch hitters do. When Coach Tar gives them a chance, they really take advantage of it. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is they have a lot of versatility. Jaron uh, played a lot of games at second base, has also seen time at shortstop and catcher. This ball driven into the gap in left center field and the outfielders don't even give chase. Jaron Fahashua hits her third home run of the season. And all of a sudden, Dina, I mean, we're in danger of uh, finishing this game right here in the sixth inning because of the run rule, the mercy rule. The Huskers score one more run in this game, ball game's over. Arizona doesn't even get a shot in the top of the seventh. That has to be exciting for the Huskies. You have a pinch run, a pinch hitter, a freshman comes in and just drives this inside pitch over the wall. It was no question about it that it was gone. That's the thing, and that's the difference between these two teams right now. Arizona having to play with a lot of their youth and inexperience, where the Huskies still have a lot of that on the bench, but it, it, they're able to give them opportunities in situations like this, and they're able to make the most of it. Big smile on the face of Jaron Fasua. Congratulations, kiddo. That was huge. I can't stop smiling. I'm excited for her. Because <laughs> I know how tough pinch hitting is. That you know you're like, this is my chance to prove to Coach Tar I can hit. And then she comes and Don't hits smile. a home there you run. Go. <laughs> the camera's on you. Good for her. Good for her. A three-run shot. Uh, by the way, just to give you an idea of the kind of power uh, and, and the lopsided scores that you see in this conference, Last weekend, ASU and Arizona goes at it. Arizona run rules Arizona State. Arizona State run rules Arizona. And then the one game that was uh, decided by seven innings was 12-6. So, I mean, it was just a slugfest. And uh, all of a sudden, you're seeing another one here. And now I really like the Huskies' chances with Danielle Lurie going back out there in the circle in the seventh. The question is, I wonder if we'll see Danielle Lurie yes. in the circle. Do you give her, you know, a chance for the shutout and to finish this one against Arizona, or do you get some time in? Jen Salling safe at first with the dive. And what amazing speed out of Jen Salling. Bridget Del Ponte probably wasn't thinking bunt right there. Who was? Who was thinking bunt? Someone thought she was going to come and try to end the game. <laughs> well, Jen Selling having a little bit of trouble today. Two strikeouts and a walk. Probably just uh, trying to get off the schneid and uh, get something going. She got to love about fast people. They use what they got to get what they want. There you go. I never had the, I'm struggling a little bit. Let me do a sneaky bunt. <laughs> I did. I lived on them. I lived on a steady diet of them. Kimmy Pullman steps up, and uh, Sarah Akamine starts off with strike one. So this is what you love about softball, making your adjustments, and maybe Coach Tar being so big on the mental game is that the first time around, Sarah, what, one person got a hit. Mm -hmm. Now you see that they've made their adjustments, and they're really attacking her right now. Huge offensive output second and third time through the lineup here for the dogs. mentioned last time, Kimmy Pullman was a ball girl for the Mariners 
And uh, her first day on the job, pretty tough one. Line drive, she missed it, hit a guy in the face. <laughs> missed one, line drive into right field. Jen Salling thought about going from first to third, but she's gonna hold up at second. And then uh, they switch sides. And there's this little boy who's begging for a ball. Says, hey, can I have a ball? Can I have a ball? She says, yeah, if I get one, I'll give it to you. So she gives the little kid the ball. No sooner does she hand the little kid the ball as he hucks it into the middle of the field. And the umpire's looking at her like, what? She's thinking, I'm having a, first, uh, a bad day on my first day on the job here. So Kimmy Pullman and Jen Salling with back-to-back -back singles. And Danielle Laurie. A great ending to a story. Back at Danny, it. in the game. Yes. Danielle Laurie with an opportunity here again because of the mercy rule. We've got Jen Salling out at second base in scoring position. Danielle Laurie singles and brings her in. This ball game's over. We don't play the top of the seventh. Let's see how bad Danielle Laurie doesn't want to pitch the top of the seventh. <laughs> Danny is really enjoy hitting now. Mm -hmm. She loves hitting. So Danny probably, wants, she's looking for a home run right now. I think she hasn't had one in a while. She just probably wants one. Akamine starts her out with strike one. And in the last at bat, we saw Akamine dancing around Danielle Laurie quite a bit. Smartly so. Danielle Laurie ended up with a single. Got as far as second base. And that was as far as she would get. Count now at one and one against Danielle Laurie. Are the words ball, 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 ball? Yes, ball, ball. let's go dogs. We, we, we've been hearing that cheer a lot. No offense, Arizona pitchers. <laughs> a lot of balls. Now I understand. Okay. Ball, 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 ball. You sing that. Ball, 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 ball. Gotcha. Oh, I can tell you about the cheer. <laughs> well, I'm going to need you to translate because I, I didn't even understand that's what that was for. But now that's what we have Dean around here for. I'm a smarter person. Look at see, that's what I'm saying. Danny's wanting one. Her last home run was March 19th. This ball is ripped into right field. Jen Salling is going to tag from second and move on to third. That ball was roped into right field. Carissa Buchanan actually making a nice play on it. That is the toughest ball to judge in the outfield is the line drive hit right, right at you. At you. As Danny laces his ball to right center is that you can, your first, first step cannot be up on that line drive because it will embarrass you. Then this goes to base running. If Jen gets to third, that might be ball game on the play before on Kimmy's Ooh, hit. Yeah, you're a good point, good point. That is ball game, you're right. Base running can see, hurt you. At the, pro the same time, though, I think the thing, the thinking may have been with HT out at third base is, look, we're up by seven. We're not taking the extra base anymore. I'm not going to call Jen out, but I saw Coach Tar waving her. She missed it. <laughs> I saw, You're not going to call her out, but she just out, did. <laughs> but I did see Coach Tar waving her to third, and she thinks she missed it. Uh. <laughs> It will always come back to haunt you if you don't do what is supposed to be done. God, that sounds like I've heard that before. <laughs> one way or the other, I think we're four outs away from the end of this ball game. Maybe one out, maybe three. But one or the other. I'm definitely for the one. I just, I, all I was saying was we're not going extra innings. That's just, that was me really going out on a limb and saying we weren't playing extra innings. All kinds of juju right there. Got to knock on some wood. Uh, Nikki Williams, who singled in the second and also flew out to the shortstop in the second because she batted around, or the Huskies batted around. This one, a dribbler, and Akamine is going to throw Nikki Williams out. So we will play the top of the seventh inning. The Wildcats down to their last three outs.
Welcome back. The Wildcats down to three out. I like the Husky chances. Right there, you're looking at uh, the Evergreen State floating bridge, 520. You know, I never knew till I rode on the I-90 that you're on water. And ever since then, I've been afraid to drive on the 520. Float on the floating bridges? Yeah, I never knew that till I was on the I-90 and saw like, whoa, it's on water. You gotta be kidding me. All right, so are you serious? You didn't realize that they were floating bridges. You look, you here at softball, Husky softball stadium, looking at that bridge every day and you didn't realize it was floating on water? Interesting. Uh, a couple of defensive changes for you. Jaron Fa'asua out at second base. So Fa'asua will kick Amanda Fleischman from second base out to right field. Got to keep running after she hits a home run. Absolutely. Like, actually, you hit the ball hard, you know, but. You got a fielder's choice. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so uh, Bridget Del Ponte, Lini Correa, and Bailey Kirker are the Wildcats' last hope. At least try to get a. Get a get one run. I think seriously, you, right now you're playing not for the shutout, right? That's exactly what you're doing. Is at least prove to yourself that you can score off Danny. But many of these hitters would just like a hit against Danny. Don't be greedy, Dina. Don't be greedy. Danielle Laurie with nine strikeouts up until this point. Again, yesterday she uh, retired the side in the seventh and finished the game with a strikeout on her 100th pitch. Yeah! Big swing right there out of Bridget. That Danny's coming up on the 1600 strikeout record. Like every time she strikes someone out, she's getting closer to having 1600 strikeouts for her career. And is it Hollowell? Hollowell is the Pac-10 leader, I think, ever in strikeouts with 1700 and change. And uh, there goes strikeout victim number 10. And Wildcats down to their last two outs. I just feel like every strikeout, you just feel like the, she's breaking a record. Well, she's she's setting records every time she does that here at the University of Washington. That is true. Yes, Hollowell and Granger are the top. Matt Hack, a 5'10 freshman out of Katy, Texas, will come in and pinch hit for Lini Correa. Maddie Hack has had to be extremely flexible here and play third. Him is an infielder, so it's, it's not a complete stretch. But I think that happens a lot of times. You know, they may recruit you as a shortstop, and you may find yourself out in center field. And uh, Danielle Lurie. Angie. Yeah, <laughs> we'll have to actually, yeah, you're, you're right about that. Uh, interesting that Danielle Lurie would start her, start her out with a strike. Generally, with pinch hitters, boom, go right at him. And, Comes back with a changeup right there to even it up at one and one. But, you know, if you're a pitcher facing a pinch hitter who hasn't, you know, had one up at this whole game, coming off cold off the bench, you know, here you go, hit this. Unless you're the Huskies, because the Huskies pinch hitters seem to be on fire. But that's generally the rule of thumb. Just attack them. And uh, then Danielle Laurie does come back and get up on her one, two. This one just missing outside. Hack able to move, move the count to two and two. After this performance, you're thinking that because Danny actually won last week, Pac-10 Pitcher of the Week, which was her 13th of her career. One more, and she ties Alicia Hollowell to be the leader. Mm -hmm. Is that uh, this is the number two nation, number two team in the nation, and she's um, shutting them down. This is the second game in the row. Yeah, and don't forget, this is the number one offense in the nation. They are the number two team, but they have the number one scoring offense in the nation. And the fact that Arizona is able to do that with the schedule that they play is uh, is pretty pretty impressive. So Danielle Laurie striking out the first two batters here in the seventh, and Bailey Kirker, the last hope for the Wildcats. She's a good person to have up. She has one of the two hits. <laughs> yeah, good point. And she's also a strikeout victim, number seven, back in the fifth inning. Danielle Laurie evens up the count at one and one. Gosh, as a hitter, I would feel so embarrassed that I would be, that's my name, strikeout victim number 
kid. <laughs> I'm just renaming them all. They're no longer Korea or Kirker or Areola. Or They're just out number five. Exactly. <laughs> I remember you. Hey, let me tell you something. There are a lot of amazing hitters on Danielle Laurie's distinguished list. Oh, that's what I always say. I feel special. You know, I was um, I set a record. Alicia Holloway broke a record and won me. They With screamed me. it after I struck out. Really? <laughs> that she was, was strikeout like, well, hey. victim. You, were, see, you was, had that title, too, for I, Alicia Holloway. I was one of her records. <laughs> it's a game that keeps on giving. Danielle Laurie uh, falls behind here 3-1 and one to Bailey Kirker. Look at the focus on Danny's face. Mm -hmm. She's trying to end this game. She could have with an at-bat in the sixth. <laughs> she comes back with strike two. And so here we go. Full count, two outs. Huskies up 7 nothing in the top of the seventh. Danny and all of a thinking. sudden, everybody's going to get up and start screaming for Danny. She's thinking she had to get a couple more Ks before she ends her day. 11 just isn't enough. And that'll be 12. So Danielle Laurie ends the game today the same way she did it yesterday with a strikeout. We're coming back to wrap this one up right after this. Welcome back. The Washington Huskies make it look like an easy game. They beat the Wildcats 7-0 the final score. Right now it's time for the Comcast speed play of the game. And we go to the bottom of the six for this one with two runners on. Pinch hitter Jaron Faasua takes Akamini over the wall in left center field. A three-run shot, her third home run of the season. And that one pretty much put this ball game away. Dina Tyson and this is huge because the Huskies, with the victory today, have assured winning this series. Is that it's huge for the Huskies to take this series, is that they have now said they are number one because they just took the series from the number two team in the nation. Yeah, tomorrow at noon, they will do it again, no matter what happens in that game. Washington, again, has won this series. This is the first time since 2000 that Washington has won the series from both Arizona and UCLA. Nikki got him going. Shauna Wright hit the two-run shot in the second. The second inning proved to be all that they would need. They would add on to it in the sixth inning. A huge day offensively for the Huskies. Thanks so much for joining us, everybody. We'll do it again tomorrow. For my broadcast partner, Dina Tyson Sly, I am Angie Mintink. The Huskies, your 7-0 winner over the Wildcats.